This is a tutorial on binding in Anime Studio Pro. I don't know about others, but there are so many options in binding uh, in Anime Studio Pro that uh, it gets a bit confusing to me, and so this is kind of a reminder for me, and hopefully it can be helpful to others. So I think uh, two key points that are most important as we think about all the different binding types is Flexi binding is really the foundation of most of the binding. And then the second thing is if you're trying to set uh, flexi binding up, let's say you've changed it and want to now set it back to flexi binding, make sure you select all the points. If you don't select the points, you can keep clicking on uh, flexi binding and it, it won't work. It won't seem to work. Okay, for our setup, I'm going to be doing something uh, that's like an arm. And you can see, I've set it up on wireframe so you can see the points. And it's really just a kind of extended rectangle with the curves on the end. Three points on either side. And then six points in the middle where that bend is going to be around the elbow. I've added another bone here so I can show the effect of flexi binding uh, and region binding. So that's the setup that we're going to use. Okay, so let's assume that uh, you've got some setup and uh, you just it's not working the way that you think it ought to work and things just aren't moving like you'd expect and you just want to start over again things aren't bound the way you expect so the easiest way to do that is just to go to bone and release layer endpoints that way if there's any layer binding or point binding uh, they'll be released and so you can see I can manipulate these bones and they don't affect the vector Okay, so now what I want to do is set up the uh, flexible binding, and I want to do that because that's the foundation of most of the binding, and I think it's the default setting. So before I actually set it up, I want to show that the way I've set it up here, I've got um, a switch layer, and then the vector layer underneath that, and I do that so I can show that uh, what you need to do is check the panel, and under bones, make sure that allow nested layer control is set up. Again, we're going to do flexible binding. We'll talk about region binding a little bit later. And uh, I do that for all, if you've got multiple nestings, uh, you might want to have this checkbox uh, uh, checked. I'm not sure if it has to happen on every single one, uh, but it's just a good practice, uh, especially at the very top one. Make sure you've got allow nested control there. Okay, so once you have released all the layers and points, uh, let me go back to my layer, released uh, the layer and points, so now that you have no binding going on, uh, we can do this in one step, but I'm going to show you in two. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to select the, the bones that we want to control the vector, and then underneath bone, select use selected points. Uh, selected bones for flexi binding. Okay, now you might think that that will actually work, but that's not enough because what we have to do is we have to select a set of points and we say bone flexi bind the points. So now as we manipulate it, we'll see that those points are affected and they're affected only by the bones that we want to affect it. Now if I go in here to say bone and I say use all of the bones, now even that last bone it affects the movement of the points. Now if you've got an arm next to a body that can be a real problem and that's why the use um, selected bones for flexi binding is very helpful. Now be very careful because right now I have uh, the middle bone is the current bone and if I select now use selected bones for flexi binding guess what my bone has become detached now I don't have to rebind the points again I just need to select the, the bones of interest and go back to bone and say use selected bones for flexi binding and now it works kind of as I'd expect now of course one of the things that uh, was recently added is the uh, smooth joint capability. Um, and the way you do that is just again select those bones that you want to 
control the arm, and it's got to be two, and they have to be in a straight line, and they have to be parented in the normal way. So we want to go to bone and then create smooth joint bone. What will happen is a circle will come up, and now you can see it's a much nicer bend. Now I also need to point out that um, if I don't first bind the points, like for the flexi binding, um, I can get something that seems strange. Let me uh, release the layer of points for right now. And you can see that circle's still there, so I would think, well, why is my bone not working? And that's because I didn't have the points bound. So again, flexi bind points. So even though it says create smooth joint, it's really kind of like the flexi binding, or it's a, that foundation is what I was talking about. And if I want to go back to the flexi binding, all I have to do is select use uh, selected bones for flexi binding. But again, make sure I've got the bones of interest uh, properly selected first. And so now I can say use selected bones for flexi binding, and it will work as I expect. Now, so let's take a look at region binding. I've brought that third bone close, but I've turned on the bone strengths, and you can see that uh, the strength is just outside of the vector. Let me bring up the dialog for this layer and underneath bone I'm going to uh, with flexible binding make sure that that's applied and I'm going to show you what happens there. If flexible binding is set and all the bones are being used for the flexi binding, then if we drag this bone, it affects the vector. Um, so no matter how far away it is, it'll affect it. Um, but if we select region binding and I select apply, now that uh, bone, because it's outside of the bone strength, it doesn't affect the vector. So I think the region binding was actually more important when you didn't have the ability to um, use selected bones for flexi binding. So if we're using flexi binding, then there's really three styles. One is uh, use the uh, set of selected bones for flexi binding, or you can do the smooth joint for a bone pair, or can use all of the bones. And let me show you what that will look like. Um, if we have, if we're using all of the bones for flexi binding, then they just uh, look like normal bones. If we select a couple of them and say use selected bones, then those bones will be a little bit more bold than the other bones, so you know that flexi binding is happening there. And these are the two bones that will affect this layer for flexi binding. If, of course, if we're using the smooth joint, we see that circle. So that's that's how we know which bones and which style is being applied. Okay, so as we look at the bones here, again, I'm, I'm going to uh, release all the layers and points. And I'm going to uh, use all bones for flexi binding. And I'm going to select flexi bind layer. And that kind of has a strange behavior. Uh, I don't use it much. Um, I don't really know what value it is. Uh, so that's in there. But really, uh, you want to use that section for releasing or binding points and then releasing layers um, or layers and points. And then you have the three options for flexi binding there. OK, so the next modes of um, binding are pretty obvious, and they're binding a layer uh, to a bone, or binding points to a bone. Okay, so to bind a layer to a bone, all I do is select uh, the bind layer, and this have a layer selected, and just select a bone. And so now everything will 
be attached to that, the whole layer will be attached to that particular bone. Now an interesting point here is you can, um, for switch layers, you can bind those to a bone, and every layer then in the switch layer will be bound uh, to that bone, and so you can manipulate it, and that's good for things like heads. But an interesting thing can happen. Uh, if you click now on the layer that's underneath the switch layer, the bones seem to have disappeared, and you're going, well, where did they go? And that's because the, uh, the entire switch layer is bound to a particular bone, so there's no really need to show these other bones in these lower layer. To turn that off, I can go to Bone Release Layer, or I could have uh, just selected the uh, Bone Layer uh, tool and just click on the background. And points are pretty obvious as well. And I just select a bone first. That's the thing that I have to do first. And then I'm going to select a set of points that I want bound to that bone. And then I click on this Bind Points button and they become much larger so you can see which points are bound to which bone. Okay, so if I want to, I'm going to go to wireframe so it's a little bit easier to see. And now I'm going to select another bone and I'm going to select the points to associate with that bone. And I can press shift and get another one. And again, select bind points and you can see that these become much larger. So if I click on a particular bone, you can see which points are bound to it. If I s click on that icon here, you can see that there are points that are bound to bones. You just can't tell which one unless I select on the bone. Okay, And so the behavior is as you would expect. A little bit strange here because that doesn't really make sense, but I'm just showing the technique. So I guess the last point to remind is we can do uh, layer, uh, switch layers can be bound. Uh, if I'm going to do point binding or you know flexi binding with things like uh, smooth joints and I've got a switch layer on, I really want to apply that to each individual layer and don't want to have any kind of binding on the switch layer. Um, and I think that's about it. Hope it's helpful.